In this video, we will discuss footprints mostly and some associated examples. So let's just start right off here with this example in South Africa. And you've probably seen this one. This is uh, Dr. Robert Schock, I believe. And he's standing next to it, so you get a sense of the scale of it. About four or five feet long. Obviously, it looks like a footprint, a big toe, and whatever. And uh, a couple different images here. This is uh, Michael Tellinger. And you see the, the protruding part here where it looks like the footprint, I guess, or the foot pressed into the rock. And um, presumably it uh, fossilized or petrified after the footprint was left. Um, that's the theory anyway. And you know, left by a giant or something like that. And I'm, let's, I'd like to explore that hypothesis and give my two cents on that. So here we can see fairly clearly delineated toes and it could be real, um, but I'll get into my most, my best guesses for the explanation in a minute. So here's the, the rest of the rock face that it's on. And so footprint right here. And then the rest of the rock face looking very similar and uh, just doesn't look like a foot, right? Uh, and then here's the to the other side of it. Uh, pretty grainy, low resolution, unfortunately, but we get a sense of the surrounding rock that it's situated on. Just giving you some context here. Here's a better look. And we see these kind of contours here and maybe natural, maybe markings, uh, like the same type of marking which created this footprint and even these uh, rock uh, layers and cracks and contours, they may all be um, just like uh, artwork by whatever created this uh, footprint. Um, I'll get into that in more detail in a minute. So let's jump to this example in Lozovsky, Russia. And the general idea here is that big footprints can be found all around the world that look human. Okay, so uh, what's the explanation for them? So Lozovsky, Russia, we've got one more, roughly the same size, I would say. One, two, three, four, five toes, pretty clear. Here's another look at it. One, two, three, four, five. So d definitely looking like an ape footprint or a human footprint about the size of this lady. And so giants, I'm skeptical, to be honest. Uh, Lozovsky, Russia, that's where this one is, right here, Lozovsky, Russia. And then uh, here's another one in China, this image just comparing them. So uh, I think Southwest China, I believe, somewhere. And we see the clearly delineated toes. Uh, here's, I don't know if these are kids' feet, but um, just for reference, we got one, two, three, four, maybe five toes. And it's in pretty solid rock, it looks like. Um, this, I don't know if this is the exact same one. This one is um, 22.5 inches long. And I think this is in China as well. Uh, might be a slightly, yeah, I think it's a different footprint. Um, got a couple different looks at this one. And looks like a footprint and it's in pretty solid stone and possible second footprint there and maybe right here as well another one um, and then we're just looking at a, few, at a few different examples here here's one in South Assay Indonesia uh, this one looking quite a bit more um, well-defined possibly cartoonish maybe even it might even be modern art uh, so there's a chance that that's the case and see this nice clean line here so keep that in mind that this might be modern work like similar to uh, Batu Malin Kundang in um, Indonesia I think it's like a modern like 1980s coastal uh, art installation so uh, this could be something like that because uh, I mean it looks a little too perfect um, 
and then this, I don't know if this is the same one or it might be right next to it. Uh, it's looking like it might be like, uh, like this is the footprint. And then here's a second one right here, possibly. Um, and then this is another location, obviously resembling a footprint. This one's a little more um, abstract. It could be, you know, could be natural or could be perceived as a footprint. Obviously not quite sure where this one is. Um, so let me just weigh in with my most likely explanations for all of these footprints, um, including this big South Africa one. Um, so go back to that slide. And so uh, I've done these kind of in order of likelihood. So rough, rough percentages here. Don't take the percentage too seriously, but Okay, so small chance it's just natural rock, which happens to look like a footprint, but it's not a footprint. So uh, obviously it's going to vary from case to case. Like maybe this one's natural, but uh, this one's not. Uh, so, uh, and maybe this is, you know, like a bear or polar bear or something, footprint, or, you know, some prehistoric critter. So each case may be different, but for the most part, I'm talking about these like this one and this one, like these big uh, obnoxious footprints. So I wanna focus on the, the more obnoxious ones, especially like, like this one in Russia, this, this big guy here um, and the South Africa one. So, so let's go over the explanations for these, uh, the bigger obnoxious ones. So, um, uh, just natural rock, which happens to look like a footprint, but it's not, maybe. Okay, so it also might be a footprint from an actual biological creature, and then it's petrified naturally. So this would be the theory that there were actual giants in the, um, walking the earth, like giant humans, and then it, they just made footsteps, and some of their footsteps in the mud or whatever uh, turned to stone and survived. Um, by natural petrification or fossilization processes. So that may be the case. Uh, uh, for the obnoxious ones, I think that's more likely to, than this one, just because those footprints don't look like they could be natural. Um, okay, so next up we have, okay, it's a footprint from an actual biological creature which was petrified with some sort of weird weaponry or device. So same as this one, this possibility basically, but instead of natural petrification, we have um, some type of artificial uh, intervention uh, causing the turning to stone of the footprint. So um, like a, a beam weapon or, you know, anything, just something weird. I think that's somewhat more plausible some of these um, explanations I might even swap with one another. Like, again, the likelihoods are very loose. I just kind of fitted it to this graphic I found. Um, but, uh, yeah, there, it could be an actual footprint which was uh, turned to stone with some kind of high tech. So there, there actually was a giant, and then he walked on land or whatever, and then something uh, petrified his footprint for whatever reason. Um, other, I will come back to in a moment, so just ignore this. Um, okay, so next up we have some pre-existing scene was given a makeover and heavily modified, deceptively imbued with false details to scramble, besmirch, or obscure whatever was there beforehand. So in other words, the footprints are faked as part of a strange cover-up. So, okay, there was no giant who left any footprint. Um, it's just a fake footprint as part of a cover-up um, or a diversion perhaps or you know so there was some interesting landmark or building or structure or um, a footprint of something else or whatever interesting historical detail um, and then someone came along some type of deceiver entity or concealer and uh, to cover uh, the tracks of whatever was there before or to um, 
to obscure or uh, scramble whatever was there beforehand uh, that created these goofy false details such as footprints and whatever else. So that may be the case. I think that's quite likely. Um, um, but not as likely as this last one. Um, the entire scene was whipped up from scratch, more or less, as a mystery which does not resolve, complete with rich layers of idiosyncratic features and, a f and false indications of history. The details paint a story which never happened, a confusing muddle which doesn't quite add up. So, uh, this is pretty similar to the one before, except um, rather than it being part of a cover up like to uh, obscure what was there beforehand it's just like the the whole area was um the whole area is involved and it's uh whipped up as a deliberate mystery or like a bunch of false rabbit holes i've talked about this quite a bit um so the footprints would be uh false rabbit holes footprints still faked like this explanation but um uh, it's creating a false narrative, that's the main goal of it, like to bewilder or whatever. Um, it's like w whipping up uh, a big uh, nonsensical story to, for you to get like distracted by or something like that. Um, so it's not a cover-up, but rather it's just a big mess of... Uh, phony details. So, so this, these two would be, there were no giants and they're not real footprints. Um, and, uh, then the, the why behind that is, uh, still up for debate. So adding these up, I would say it's more than 50% chance to me. I would say that the footprints are not from an actual giant creature. That's my best guess. And okay, now let's talk about other. So, uh, so the footprint may be a natural feature which has been embellished by modern carving. I think that's actually um, a good explanation for a lot of these, or some of them at least. Um, if it weren't for the scale and variety and uh, distribution of and sheer volume of so many footprints and handprints and similar features and the accompanying features and the sites they occur at, if it weren't for like the, the total body of uh, weird details, um, then I'm, I might lean towards this explanation, uh, at least on some examples. But in context, I don't think this is as likely as uh, these two over here. Um, but yeah, for some of these, we could imagine that uh, it was like something, some some natural feature which kind of looked like a foot, and then uh, some hiker came along and embellished it or chiseled it, even like 300 years ago or a thousand or 5,000 years ago. You know, maybe s some caveman dude just was beaten at this with a rock because he wanted to artistically make a, um, uh, a f footprint or, you know, Maybe something already kind of looked like a footprint, and he said, hey, I'm going to make that look like my foot looks, you know, just for the hell of it. Um, so that's possible on some of these. Um, even even this, yeah, this may be an embellishment of a natural tide pool by some type of modern artist. So keep that in mind. So that would be these this other uh, category. Another possibility under other is uh, accidental AI vomit. And by that, I mean just um, like s some type of experiment gone wrong where some type of supercomputer uh, just went um, apeshit and just started making gibberish nonsense patterns. So this would be like there's no agenda or agency behind it, really. It's, it was just like an honest mistake. So that doesn't uh, fit into these two categories over here because these are more calculated. But I just want to throw in the possibility of an accidental uh, gibberish protocol. Like it's, it wasn't necessarily on purpose, although it certainly looks like it was to me. Um, but there's a possibility it wasn't. Uh, uh, okay, so art artistic doodling by someone with high tech. So 
again, maybe someone, um, rather than hikers coming along, uh, embellishing like a tide pool or something, maybe it's like the gods or, you know, the Anunnaki or whoever, aliens, whatever, just, um, like expressing themselves, just like they took a picnic to the beach and decided to draw a foot with their high-tech plasma beam or whatever, you know, just for the hell of it, um, because they like to or whatever. Uh, so this would be another one where there's like no, um, mischievous intent behind it. It's just like self-expression. So maybe somebody just drew these with some type of uh, plasma pen or something like that in, during a lost era or whatever, um, you know, just for self-expression or whatever, tracing a path around their foot, you know, like we would place our hand around on a piece of paper and just trace a crayon around it. So it, it would be kind of in, along that theme. Um, I still think there's a more mischievous explanation, Oops, like one of these two explanations. Um, but one more in other, uh, it could be like bleed through from <laughs> parallel universes or something like that. So I, I, it could be any number of things we could drum up here under other. I just kind of lumped a bunch of stuff into this last wedge over here because there's too many, um, too many different possible explanations. Oh, another one is like ink, uh, or piece piecemeal or um, accrual over time of different uh, combinations of these. So um, so this is kind of an example of that, uh, like it's natural first and then someone comes along and embellishes it. So this would be like multiple contributions, like multiple stages of um, creation of the feature from multiple contributors, like possibly for multiple reasons. So in other words, something like this wasn't created all at once, but uh, by multiple contributors over time, possibly, or multiple contributing factors, um, certainly possible. I think it's more likely that they were created in one fell swoop by whatever created them. Um, anyways, uh, so other... Oh, and I just wanted to say there's quite a bit of overlap between these and, like, shades of, um intersection between uh, these explanations and they're kind of uh, somewhat somewhat arbitrary uh, divisions here so there's some some possibility for like shades of like Venn diagramming or overlap between these uh, explanations so I mean like for example maybe it was petrified with some sort of weaponry or device and then there was also natural petrification of some kind, which subsequently set in. Um, so we could be dealing with multiple phases and certainly multiple dynamics uh, affecting the current uh, contemporary appearance of these footprints. Okay, so hopefully that helps a little bit at least. Um, now I'm gonna explore a few more feet. Uh, so a lot of feet in this video and uh so yeah let's look at some feet so you may have seen this one the giant's toes at spring canyon park in fort collins colorado and some people have attempted to pass these off as real or like actual petrified giant with his feet sticking out of the ground i think there's a slight possibility that that's true but i'm going to tell you why i don't think that's very likely so, interesting look to these. I mean, kind of looks a little fake, like a Disneyland attraction or something like that. The toenails look a little goofy, um, but I, I could see it maybe being real. It looks a little more real in this one, possibly just because of the coloration and just a few different looks here. So here's that Spring Canyon Park. We've got uh, all over the park, there's these little outcrops of rock, uh, like this here, this here, and these, uh, the playground is kind of perforated or um, punctuated with these uh, fun little rock islands and each one has a little piece of a, a giant and the giant is par uh, the giant theme is part of a local legend where like the Indian chief slayed the giant or whatever which is interesting in and of itself 
Here in this image, we can kind of see the outline of like the chin and the mouth and the nose of this uh, giant depiction. I'll show it in a minute here. Um, here you see it from another angle, like his, it's a basically like a cartoonish face laying on its side. Here we have one of these little fun play area rock things and just a few different looks at this play area. Uh, this rock looking fairly fake. So I'm, I'm thinking this whole area is just like modern stuff. So here's a good look at the giant and his face. Um, there's his eye, it's, his eyes closed, and then his forehead or eyebrow, and then his nose and nostril, and his mouth and lips, and then his chin here. So I'll maybe zoom out just to get some perspective. And you can see that's, that's, we're not looking at a real giant here. Slight chance that it's um, uh, an actual giant which was like derpified or cartoonized, um, you know, 50% in order to make it look less real. So maybe there was an actual petrified giant or who knows whatever else, and then something came along uh, to uh, derpify it. So that would be kind of um, along the lines of besmirching or uh, like a weird cover up or something like that. Um, now, uh, one key question is like, is this rock naturally there to begin with, or is this like concrete that was laid? It's hard to say. Um, it's it's good work. I mean, if it's uh, modern stuff, I, th I think it's like natural uh, rock, which has been uh, sculpted by some artist. Okay, same thing here, probably with the toes. We're gonna get, get a couple more looks at these. So these, are these giant toes? Mm, I don't think so. Um, okay, and uh, in a minute I'll touch on something which I just remembered. So here's a kid climbing on these and they kind of just look like cast concrete maybe or like cast uh, uh, stone or whatever, uh, sculpted stone or something like that. I only really bring this example up because um, I think there is, or I'm sorry, I'm uh, getting multiple thoughts mixed up. Uh, I bring this up because uh, some people have tried to pass this off as real and I don't, I don't think that's the most likely thing. And one thing I wanted to say I just remembered is um, I think the giant, um, the whole giant, um, you know, earth made of corpses uh, theory or uh, uh, stone giants, like giants turned to stone. I think that may be like one um, final card that the system with a capital S or the, the protocol with a capital P, one last attempt at um, painting a false story of what actually happened. So it may just be one last scramble or towards the end. I think we're towards the end of the whole shenanigans, to be honest. But, um, uh, let's see. So I'm, I'm saying like the whole promotion, albeit, um, kind of backhanded and subtle and only to certain uh, demographics, but the whole promotion of uh, giants as um, part of our past and part of uh, the Earth's crust as well, that may be um, just another scramble or false narrative that's trying to be painted um, in order to hide the true story. Uh, which I'm not quite sure what that is, but, um, okay, so let me continue and I might expound on that in a minute. So another reason why this area is obviously fake is because, uh, or not a real giant, is because we see these uh, com or cartoonish or uh, not real looking uh, fingerprints, like this would be a fist and uh, this would be the, the fingerprint. So we zoom in here, we see that the ridges 
on the, on the fingerprint, obviously not real. So uh, I'd say slight, maybe 5% chance that this is an actual giant fist and then uh, to conceal or um, to, um, to uh, scramble that fact, they added cartoonish looking details of a giant fist. So they, um, they went over the top with it in order to uh, discredit it as a, a giant fist when maybe it really is a giant fist. Possible. Certainly possible. It's kind of a clever way of obscuring something and hiding it in plain sight. That could be, and here we see the giant face in the background. Mm. So Mona, Monomaku and the Stone Giant, that's the local legend. And decent look at the rock here, whether you think it's like natural rock, which has been sculpted and chiseled or whatever you think, um, or cast maybe. Um, okay, so there's this placard here. Uh, you can read some of it if you want. And Monomaku and the Stone Giant. So I'll read you the, the cliff notes on that story in a moment. I did find it interesting that like the Rotary Club, there's something with like Rotary Clubs and all these weird clubs and associations and lodges and stuff like that. I think they're all somehow um, uh, implementers of the, the protocol or the, the ongoing scramble of uh, our context, which includes uh, false narratives of giants and um, all kinds of false historical components. Um, you know, uh, faking history and faking the present even, and, okay. Um, so this is an interesting thing. Four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? I don't know that this is <laughs> particularly revealing. Uh, I just wanted to read it, just to give some context to this area. Uh, playground theme. So it's a themed playground, and I don't know why they uh, include this inscription, but is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Um, I, I wonder if this is like a slight hint at... Uh, like an outing themselves kind of thing where they, they're they asking you, like, is there some uh, falsehood going on here or some deception? Maybe, could be, anyways. So here's a more like surrounding area, the natural rock. There's quite a bit of, uh, it's a quite rocky area. Um, so my best guess for the playground is that these little areas of uh, fake giant parts our natural rock, which was um, shaped by whoever built the park, you know, artisans or masons or whatever. Um, so nothing necessarily scandalous there. Um, okay, and it's in the vicinity of this thing called Horse Tooth Rock, which has to do with that local legend. And the idea is this thing looks like, I guess, a lower, lower tooth of a horse. Um, so there's a Native, Native American legend in which a giant uh, Monomaku, I think, or actually, I think that's the Indian chief. Um, so a giant slain by Chief Monomaku with a tomahawk from the heavens. So Chief Monomaku uh, reaches up to the heavens and grabs this tomahawk and slays this giant. And then the giant turns to stone, and uh, this horse, horse tooth rock is the remainder of the giant's body, allegedly. Uh, I think that's either just an innocent uh, fable or old wives tale that someone would make up just to tell their kids for fun and it just kind of stuck, or it's like something kind of uh, inserted or seeded as like just a, a yet another fake story just to spice up Earth's history and make it uh, Im, um, undecipherable or uh, just um, kind of uh, haphazard and all kinds of stuff going on. Like you can't quite 
glean your context because there's all these weird false legends and goofy stories going on, not to mention the conventional narrative. Um, okay, so the giant was terrorizing the town and Chief Mon Monomaku uh, apparently gets a magic tomahawk and kills him. So I don't think there's any truth to that necessarily. A lot of times people will read into these legends, especially like the natives well, legends and stuff like that, like the Aboriginal legends and the, uh, what else, the Native American legends and uh, Indian legends. And they'll like take these um, old stories as uh, truth or as um, uh, passed down, like orally passed down or sometimes written, whatever, uh, like stories of stuff that actually happened. And I think there's certainly a possibility to that, but I think there's also a possibility that all these stories are just it's like uh, sneakily um, and ever so subtly, or sometimes subtly, planted or seeded into our uh, history and cultural discussions as like false um, eddies or just distractions or... Um, um, obscuring of the actual history of Earth. So, like, false uh, things to study and uh, investigate. Uh, so, briefly, I don't know why I'm showing Horsetooth Rock. I don't, I don't, I guess just to, for context to the area, I don't think there's anything particularly fake looking or um, terraformed or anything looking in this image, I would say. Uh, here's the area. However, we're gonna see, like, this is just this lady's hike. She had a, a blog on her hike up to this horse, to, horse tooth rock. So here's horse tooth rock up close and some of the rocks nearby. Uh, some could be real rocks, could be, you know, artificial weirdness, whatever. But um, this right here, uh, somewhere along the hike, stuff like this gets me a little bit just because the, um, the rock is plenty... Uh, it's not so steep that you can't just walk up without steps. I mean, maybe they made this for like old people or something like the staircase, you know, modern trail builders or whatever, uh, forest rangers and their crews just um, making it slightly easier to hike over. But I mean, this is not that steep. So you could just walk right up this without uh, any steps. So I think steps like this are possible like derpy, um, uh, you know, just goofy details thrown into the mix by, um, by the toolers of earth, uh, kind of as a, a context prefab, like a prefab context or a managed context, just like giving us little, um, ticks in this direction, ticks in that direction, and uh, so I guess something like this would basically serve to, uh, gosh, I don't know, um, kind of scramble your brains a little bit, but just because it like kind of, kind of makes sense, but kind of doesn't, the appearance of this staircase right here. Um, like it, it's like, it like 95% makes sense, but there's just like something about it which kind of doesn't. So, uh, all right, let's uh, move on to a couple different areas in Colorado. Uh, Colorado, like I've said before, Colorado, Idaho, Utah, Arizona, uh, where else? A lot of these rocky states in the U.S. have quite a bit of weird stuff we could investigate. So uh, we're going to take a look at a couple things in Colorado uh, along the lines of large biology. So let's do that. So this place, uh, Dinosaur National Monument, I'm not, I didn't quite do any research on that, so whatever that is, but that's where this is located. And it's nicknamed the Elephant Toes for obvious reasons. Kind of looks like a, a, um, a fat, wide uh, elephant foot with uh, toes at the end. And um, once again, I'll hit home the idea that the landscape itself has been imbued or endowed with um, quasi-biological features, including um, 
somewhat toe looking features, somewhat face looking stuff, um, some stuff that looks like arms or feet or whatever, uh, as a way to create a confusing and whimsical um, overall picture, uh, like kind of for bewilderment purposes, perhaps. So uh, again, I would go back to the slides, I guess, that um, with the, the pie chart and say, yeah, there's a chance, certainly a good chance this is natural, like just natural erosion, which happened to erode this way. Uh, but more and more, I'm thinking this is like deliberately made to look um, kind of natural and also kind of um, biological and whatever else. So uh, one more time, I'll touch on that idea that large biological stuff that may be a rollout um, or um, an unfolding of a script to paint a false uh, story of a um, an era of giants. So keep that in mind. I think there very well may have been an era of giants. Um, many or maybe many eras of giants and who knows, maybe our history is literally infinite. Um, maybe Earth is like an infinitely long um, experiment or maybe it's finite or I mean, who knows, could be anything. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would say there's a, a good chance this is from an an effort to make something which looks like an elephant foot, but which is not an elephant foot. So I would say that's more likely than the possibility that this is an actual elephant foot. And um, if you remember those big claws, like five mile long claws on the edge of Lake Pupo, like I think they look quite real, but those may be part of the same story uh, or the same agenda to paint a false uh, idea of uh, the earth as uh, comprised of large corpses, um, that, yeah, uh, let me, let me gather my thoughts for a moment. So the, the idea of earth as petrified large corpses of some kind, I think that may be like yet another eddy to ensnare and, uh, uh, disqualify otherwise, uh, genuine and uh, intelligent uh, investigators. So as we get closer and closer to the truth of what happened on Earth and how Earth got to be the way it is, there are all these things that pop up, all these potentially true but ultimately uh, distracting possibilities, including the possibility of uh, very large creatures. So this the uh, geometry of this little mountain thing here, as one case study, this may have been planned uh, or pre-scripted like eons in advance just for, or at least partially for this moment in history where it is meant to be passed off as a former uh, giant creature. Um, so if, if you have like, if we have um, a growing popularity of uh, some movement to think that the earth was uh, some populated by like magical giants or something. I think we should be skeptical, open-minded, but skeptical, um, including like uh, the devil's tower, like the giant trees hypothesis and stuff. So that, that may all be yet another um, false unfolding of uh, a, a history that never happened as a way to distract from the truth, which is like, it's just like earth is just a big distraction machine or something like that. Like a big nonsense machine. Um, probably some ways I could refine that argument and say it a little more clearly, but uh, I'm working on it. So this is in Colorado. And then this next example is in Colorado as well. This is an example I found just recently uh, some dude was hiking and he noticed something which looked like a face up here on this mountain peak and then on the back side of this is something that looks like a foot so I thought it would I would throw it in this episode because we were talking about feet and footprints um, 
So just briefly commenting on the aesthetics of this. Uh, yeah, kind of looks like a face, obviously an eye, two eye sockets, maybe a nose, mouth here. And we'll see it from a lot of different angles. I have quite a few images here or little screenshots I took. Something resembling a brow ridge, perhaps kind of eyebrows, maybe. And it looks different from different angles, as we'll see in a moment. Um, uh, and then let's turn our attention f to the foot for a second. On the back side of this rock, um, big boulder thing, there's this thing that looks rather like a foot. And uh, okay, so this thing alone, the the face, I would be tempted to say, uh, kind of looks like a face, but it's um, most likely natural thing, which happens to look like a face, you know, just regular old rock. And then occasionally regular old rock will look like a face and quite often actually, and especially because uh, the human mind is designed to uh, pick out patterns that look like they might be faces, you know, for ev evolutionary reasons or whatever. So this does look quite a bit like a skull or a face or something like that, but I was tempted to say, uh, you know what, it's probably just natural rock and, you know, we're just reading too much into it. But then on the back side, there's this thing which looks a lot like a foot. So one, two, three, possibly fourth toe here and then fifth toe here. And if it were just this portion right here, I might try and write it off. But like this contour here looks just a little too much like like a foot. Um, you know, like a foot shape. <laughs> and um, one thing to observe is that unlike the other foot-like patterns in rock, which we've seen in this video so far, this one is raised up um, or uh, embossed uh, or uh, protruding from the stone rather than like indented in the stone. So we have this raised foot pattern. Um, so either there's like a petrified actual foot that's kind of like sticking out of the rock somewhat, like pressed up against from the interior up against the outside of this rock, and then it turned to stone somehow, like, um, uh, yeah. Or it's like, this is another like phony detail designed to, um, to be wilder perhaps, or as uh, an alert or like a wake up call to let you know that there's some bewildering going on or any number of weird experiments like that, like I've discussed. Um, but since this thing looks so much like a foot, I would say, and it's right on the same rock as this guy, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to take it seriously that this might actually be a petrified head and or s something that's made to look like a petrified head. Um, so, okay, I have quite a few images of this. We're just gonna jump through them real quick. So, general look at the rock and this dude. So we've got these two like pointy things like flanking them. Not quite sure what that is, just the shape of the rock, I guess. And, okay, so a few different angles here. And due to the lighting, it kind of gives them like these nice eye sockets right here. And you kind of see his mouth right here, perhaps. Uh, forehead area, maybe a ridge and like brow ridge right here. Although as we'll see, uh, looking at it from different angles, you can uh, interpret it as a face with like a different type of face. Um, I'll explain what I mean in a minute. So general landscape here, just for reference, just a rocky mountain area, blah, blah, blah. And here it is up on this hill there. And we're going to zoom in and uh, there it is. So here's the general rock, which um, I haven't made the case for yet, at least not in this video, but I would say this, this whole area is uh, like f uh, false terraforming or at least reconfigured stone <clears throat> um, by some type of weird terraforming deal. And then this is like the, the calling card type aspect of it. Okay, so let's keep zooming in. Oops. Um, yeah, so get a decent look at it. Pretty gruesome looking, pretty uh, wicked or cool at least. It's very cool. And um, here we get a good look at like this strange fin-like feature, which does seem to have some type of uh, face, uh, flattish face and some interesting angles along the edges here, almost as if this is like a, 
a dude in a, a cape or some type of elaborate costume and then that all got petrified or something um, you know perhaps whatever uh, his face is very interesting looking obviously um, certainly just uh, worth observing as a, a curiosity um, and then there's something over here like an emblem or, or almost like a badge or who knows what it is um, just like a, a little uh, flap or uh, something. Anyways, let's skip that for a moment. Possible like angle right here. Okay. Uh, I'm getting distracted. All right. So I'm just giving you a general view. Uh, so here from the side a little more, a little bit of, more of a side angle and uh, zooming in, zooming in. And we see the, the two things flanking him, kind of like ridges of some kind, possible, you know, just nonsensical patterns like of discussed. So here looking like eyes and a mouth perhaps, nice little short nose. Although in a subsequent image I'm going to show you that this might actually be the eye, this might be the nose, and then this might be like a cheek area. So let's um, uh, let's just continue I guess. So just giving a few different views. Um, so natural rock? Maybe. Looks a little too idiosyncratic to me. Okay, so here's from like just underneath it, and you see it has this interesting forward lean to it, almost like this goofy pillar, and then uh, the face and the, the winged or flanking side parts uh, kind of stick out and stick forward. Um, so that's something to consider. Here's right underneath it again, um, and yeah, it looks like a gargoyle perched up here is the best way I can describe it. Like a gargoyle perched up on this rock. And I have a whole conversation I could uh, start about gargoyles, but it's a little... Um, I don't make this video too long. So, trying to figure out if this rock is natural or not. If this is like the natural layout. Oh, this thing right here, kind of looking like a shoulder aspect or some type of... Um, not necessarily a biological shoulder, but like shoulder-esque or reminiscent, reminiscent of a, a corner of some kind. Um, you know, like in the event that this is an actual petrified gargoyle or something, maybe this is the tip of his wing, and then maybe this is like the elbow of his wing or something like that. You know, uh, maybe it's a dragon with like the front half of his skull like uh, chopped off or something like that. So a lot of possibilities, and then of course, uh, maybe it's just pattern soup, which has um, petrified organism features, but it's not petrified organisms at all. So keep that in mind. And I include this image for reference. It's like a Greek and Roman thing and other cultures as well. It's this thing called a herm, which I'll do an episode on, on the f in the future. Uh, I have a whole bunch of these images, but it's basically just a, uh, it can range in size from like a couple inches tall to, you know, uh, 10 or 20 feet tall, but it's like a bust with like phony weird arms, and then usually like a cock or some kind of hole or just like random features, often the dents, the dents are a key clue or a, um, a component of the, or a calling card of the, the gibberish program, I think, in my opinion, and then the slightly poorly drawn face, but this thing is reminiscent to me of this guy, so the, it's like this whole thing is a herm, um, that's the name of the, the, the artwork, so it's as if this portion of the rock is utilizing the same goofy principles as a herm, just, you know, with slightly different aesthetics. So again, the idea of a some type of advanced algorithm or AI um, doing variation after variation on a number of types of aesthetic uh, props. Uh, so this is like a prop to paint a false history, and so is this. It's just uh, pattern soup um, with a, a very particular look to it. Not completely random, but uh, randomized to a degree, uh, including 
the mixing of natural and artificial aesthetics. So this is, and biological, like, this is like, like 15% artificial looking, and then like, uh, let's say 80% natural looking, and then what's a, like, 5% biological looking. I don't know if I did that math right, but, um, yeah, something like that. And so it's like derp. It's just the whole, collectively, it's just fake derp. Okay, so getting into a few different uh, angles here. So here we see a nice look at this fin here, maybe the tip of a petrified wing or something, blah, 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 blah. And uh, what about the size of this guy? I don't know. I think it's about roughly the size of an actual person or maybe a gorilla or something, like if this was his head. I think it's roughly the size of maybe twice the size of a, a gorilla, so it's not that big. Um, and here we see this ridge here, this stone ridge, S certainly consistent with a possible uh, wing line of a gargoyle or something like something similar like that. And some of these contours lo looking slightly bonish. So, okay, from other angles, this and this look like the eye, but like right here and right there, depending on the light. But in this image, I would say it looks more like this is the eye, with this like the under eye uh, ridge here, this would be the brow ridge, then this like right here would be the nasal cavity, this would be the cheek area, and then this would be the mouth. So I think that's, if it is a real biological feature, or uh, uh, the remains of one, then I would say that's more likely than what the other angles suggest. So zooming in, pretty detailed look here, and these looking like teeth, and this almost looking like a, contours, or I mean uh, lines from a jaw, possibly. And uh, I think this is a pretty recent find. The video I uh, found, hopefully I'll remember to link it in the description. It's only about eight minutes. The guy gives a pretty good tour of this place. Um, it's his find, but uh, it's, yeah, just somewhere out remotely, like pretty remote area in Colorado. And, uh, yeah, I think the video is from like 2018 or 2019, so it's a relatively new development, not one that's been studied or discussed much. And we might ask the question, if the area is so remote, then why why even bother populating the um, landscape with all these details? And for one, um, I think rarity, again, is a... Uh, and, ingredient, one ingredient among many ingredients in this uh, protocol which generated all the architecture and or strange patterns on the Earth's surface. So um, one way of making something rare is just to make it remote or um, isolated or somewhat of a, uh, uh, a destination rather than, like the exception rather than the norm in the surrounding environment as possible. Although I'm willing to bet that the surrounding area has a, a ton more stuff like this guy, or at least some stuff. Um, and then another explanation for why this would appear in such a remote area, if no one would ever even see it, is um, uh, the idea that uh, it wasn't necessarily meant to be seen. Rather, uh, it's simply the uh, automated output or the result of automated output by something which um, was given certain parameters with which to reconfigure the Earth's surface, and then it went to town reconfiguring everything, and whatever patterns landed wherever, um, you know, it just it just created that. It just followed the script. Um, so, uh, let's see, I, f I feel like I could explain that a little more crisply um, so it's it's like the automated output of something which was reconfiguring or terraforming the earth's surface and then um, you know uh, whatever script it was following just happened to tell it to print out something which looks like a a gorilla or dragon or whatever right here um, 
just per the uh, goofy algorithm or um, uh, as dictated by the algorithm. Okay, so a couple things here in this image. Uh, all right, we get a good look at possible um, another way of interpreting this as a face. So eye here, nose cavity here, and then mouth area here, and possible jaw here, with the back molars right here, uh, and then like cheek cavity right here. Um, recall though, um, and one more detail, uh, possible like bony ridge here, like the side of the skull. Okay. But recall from other angles, this and this were looking like the eye and with this is the mouth. So more of a scrunched face and this would be more of a longer face. So there's multiple ways of interpreting this as a face. And that could be just coincidence or just happens to look like that. Uh, just the lighting is going to hit it in different ways. Um, uh, or it could be like this, the idea of Fontainebleau Forest in France, like one of the videos previous to this, where it's like feature soup uh, and the features are biological. So any um, sufficiently advanced computer program or 3D rendering operation could uh, create some uh, goofy, nonsensical... Um, skull more or less that looks like different faces from different angles. So from one angle it looks like this face, this uh, more scrunchy one, and from another angle it looks like this longer face, like an ape skull or something like that. And that, that may be by design and it may be by coincidence, so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, just one more look here. These are pretty sharp lines right here, so I wonder whether that's just uh, cracks in the natural rock, if it's natural or whether it's, um, okay, so it could even be um, cracks which or seams which are made to look natural but which are placed uh, in such a way that they look like they align with where a jaw might have been or a jawbone. So that would be like a, a feature salad or feature scramble of um, like kind of suggest this, kind of suggest that, kind of suggest the other, like a, again, a, just a indecipherable, almost this, almost that, almost the other type of uh, pattern. And then here, some type of, again, some type of uh, thing here. It looks a little goofy. Uh, okay, let's go to the next image. And we're zooming in here on the, the jaw area and the teeth. So possible indentation where the mouth was. And uh, these looking a little bit like molars, I won't lie. Um, so get a good look at this, like broken up teeth maybe, you know what I mean? And they, they kind of look a little bit too far back to still be teeth, but then again, I could be wrong. They might just be the very back molars here. That's the very back of it. And it may not even be teeth. It could be like just pieces of broken bone. So keep that in mind as well. But they kind of do look like teeth. Uh, good, very, his camera has good zoom, I guess. So um, lucky us. Here's a decent look at the, the look of the rock as well. And uh, so we see like this hole here and this hole here kind of suggestive of like the center of a tooth or something like that. So these could be actual petrified teeth, you know, petrified either naturally or with some kind of weird device. Um, but these may be actual teeth from some type of dinosaur or gargoyle or <laughs> giant or whatever, you know, so weird. Um, okay, and then one more time, I will just inject my little uh, spin on it, which, or uh, my possibility, um, or speculation that these these little rocks here are very calculated details which are included um, and designed to look like teeth or bone when in fact they're not. So maybe whatever algorithm was sweeping through the, the Earth's crust um, 
you know, mixing shit up and reconfiguring it, uh, maybe what, it, what the algorithm it was using uh, <laughs> is so good and so rich that it um, it knows to make quartz or some type of white uh, tooth-like pattern here where tooth or where teeth might be perceived to be in a biological petrified organism. So it's, again, the idea of it's made to look like teeth, deceptively, but it's not actual teeth or bone or whatever. So, yeah, that could be, and I'm neither one would surprise me. Okay, so one more look uh, from below-ish. Uh, the faces and tip of the wings or whatever are right up here. And nice and tall, I would say, from here to here. It's probably about 30, 40, 50 feet. And uh, just kind of like a spire or pillar here. Again, kind of like a herm or reminiscent of a, a weird statue. Um, or like part of this whole rocky outcrop is warped into some weird uh, pseudo-herm. <laughs> or quasi-herm. Um, and there's, there's other stuff here that, you know, if we looked at from certain angles, it might look like faces and stuff. So... It would be interesting to go take a hike here, I think. Uh, okay, just one more look. Closer look. Uh, kind of a gap behind it. Not sure what to make of that, if anything. And a little shelf here. Could be consequential, maybe not. Um, and this is a look from... We're going to zoom in on the face from below, more or less, or like from the side and below. So just... Uh, Keep your eye on the face just to give some context to it. And see, again, from, from this angle, it kind of looks like this is the eye, this is the eye, and this is the mouth. But it, you could also see it being this being the, um, the side of the eye, and then um, this being the nose rather than the other eye, and this just being part of the cheek, and then this being the mouth, or the lips, or whatever, teeth. Okay. So, just slightly clearer resolution here, and zoom in even more. So, whatever that is, it's something or nothing or both. <laughs> um, okay, and this is a great angle to investigate or to, um, to check out the... Uh, the secondary interpretation of the face, like brow ridge here, uh, under the eye here. So eye, eye roughly here, like his right eye looking off in this direction. Uh, left eye, can't really see it. And then this would be the nasal cavity cheek area with the jawbone perhaps. And then the, like the upper cheek ridge, like a bony uh, ridge to the, like the temple, near the temple area of this ape or whatever it was. Kind of looks like an ape skull. And yeah, we can see any number of these kind of match up with that a little bit. Like this would be that bony ridge. So look at like this, like for example, let me zoom in here. Like this bony ridge thing. Like if you imagine that a little bit higher, like up here, then um, we go back to the previous image and uh, this would be that bony ridge, like next to the eye and some type of creature. And, um, yeah, and then, uh, like this, this kind of contour, like right here, that, or, or right here, that would be equivalent to like this right here, just underlying the eye. So that's another way of interpreting this face. Um, and then here, one more look. Uh, so this, uh, this bony ridge here corresponding to that, uh, and kind of an eye cavity here looks quite organic, I would say. And then see the, the lines of the jaw, you know, maybe corresponding to this, these lines here, perhaps back teeth here, um, kind of a flat nose cavity right there. Uh, I tried to pick an, an image which was roughly looking in the same angle or uh, from the same viewing angle. So f 
from this angle, it looks quite a bit like a face as well. And then, um, see, okay, so here's a good comparison. So from this angle, it looks like face here, like eye there, eye there, nose here. Uh, but from this angle, it looks like eye, eye, mouth. And uh, in the previous image, it's this would be the nasal cavity rather than the eye. Um, so from a certain angle, it just looks like two different faces from two, two different angles. So keep that in mind. I would say if it is a real biological creature, I think this is the less likely actual face. And this one it looks like a more organic face. Um, just looking at a slightly uh, different angle and, you know, with this as the brow ridge and an eye thing, or eye uh, bone, cheekbone, whatever. Okay. So uh, let me run back a few images. Bear with me for a moment. Dirt, dirt, dirt. Um, so yeah, I just want to go back to these these kind of first first images I showed. Like, um, sorry, my keyboard was kind of running on autopilot. Um, so like from here, this uh, this looks like the eye. This is the more scrunched face, eye eye mouth, and then from the other angle, this is the the eye. Like, and then this would be the other eye. This would be the nasal cavity. So multiple ways to interpret this. Okay, let's uh, go back to where we were. Sorry, I have, I have some pretty ghetto uh, slideshow skills. <laughs> if you've noticed, I, um, it's a little uh, makeshift. But we make do. And where were we? Roughly here. Okay, so let's continue. And... So this thing kind of almost looking like like the thing off to the side here, like some type of uh, almost like a happy face, like eye, eye, mouth. But that might may just be like seeing patterns and randomness. But it looks like some either pattern soup or something mm, perhaps significant over here. So a lot of suggestive features, but nothing definitive. And then... Here again, like some type of strange flat feature, like a uh, the 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 tip or the point of this thing. I I would say it does not look natural. It's either petrified something or other, or it's uh, artificial gibberish, which is made to look like petrified something or other. So this I don't think that's natural. I'm sorry. Like this fin here, it's combined with all this other weirdness. It's it's too much for me. Okay. So, I mean, what about down here? Is this natural and then this is just like plastered on top or fused into it with high tech? Who knows? I mean, I tend to gravitate towards the explanation that all, all the surrounding rock is part of the same program which created this upper feature here. So, like, ugh, sorry. Uh, like all of this rock is uh, fake as well. It just happens to look more natural for the most part. Um, okay, lots of mouthful sentences. So maybe I'll just shut up and scroll for a minute. Just a few last angles here. Um, yep, yep, yep. View from below. Pretty cool. Okay, now we're getting to the back. So, this is the back of the guy, and I think, like, the back of this wingtip or whatever this is right here, I think that's, like, this feature right there, or something similar, but this is, at any rate, this is the back side of uh, that area with this guy, so, okay. And we're going to look at some of the features on the rear side. So we've got the footprint right here, first of all, which we'll look more at in detail in a moment. Um, we've got this thing I just noticed um, like an hour ago. Like, it looks like a flower. 
uh, we'll look at that in a moment. And then this looking like natural rock or um, like 90 95% natural, 5% uh, artificial, like some of the, the straight patterns here are slightly goofy. So we'll look at that. So we're just gonna pan down here. So pan and just observing, just observing nothing in particular just yet. Uh, okay, looking at the rock, the way it looks. Just observing possible grooves and weird indentations, possibly natural. And that was a nice pan. And back down. Okay, so let's focus on a couple details here. So first of all, this foot, it looks like a foot, but it, uh, it's got a little uh, gap here, and then it protrudes here. I think it, it protrudes rather than uh, being an indentation, like protruding toes. I think these protrude. And then, um, like, yeah, you see the direction of the light, like this, this little ledge is casting a shadow to the left of it. So this toe is casting a shadow to the left of it. So I'm pretty sure these toes are raised up rather than indented. So this is not a footprint, in my opinion. Uh, and I think that's a pretty conservative statement. Um, what else? <clears throat> so, okay, let's do the math. What, what explanation fits the bill of a, a goofy head up on the other side of, or gargoyle head up on the other side of this thing, and a nice little clean footprint pattern um, raised up out of the stone? What explanation fits that? And possibly even like a s reminiscent second f uh, pattern of a second footprint here. Okay, so what explains all this? Uh, I mean, this could be from another creature or from the same creature, which is up on the other side of this. Like they just cut off his foot and then like the, the very bottom of his foot is sticking out of the rock. So like, uh, like the rock is all like uh, some type of artificial concrete more or less, and then, um, or um, artificially manipulated natural stone. And then inside of that whole mass is uh, some body parts. And then this is one body part slightly sticking out or protruding from that mass of uh, sculpted rock. That could be, uh, gosh, I don't know. I don't think that's likely, I'll be honest. I think this is an imposed, uh, faked or, um, uh, intended to look uh, like a foot, but it's not from an actual biological creature. It's not a petrified something or other. It's just um, like patterns or, um, yeah. And then it's, it's just, um, it's just prominent enough that we can uh, discern that it's, that something's up, you know, something's up, but it's also just uh, messy enough to the point where we might think it's natural, like 100% natural um, as well. And I think that is all strategic. That's, that's kind of the main point I want to make. It's, it resides in this weird middle space of quasi-artificial, quasi-artistic, quasi-biological, quasi-natural. And then this is looking like a flower like like a, uh, a daisy or I don't know my flower types, but like petals of a flower, like one, two, three, four, like um, vaguely, roughly, very rough, but, and then the center of the flower right there. Um, it's, uh, yeah, again, a, a very rough and kind of grainy image. Um, could be just a natural feature, but sig again, just a plumbus collectively this whole area is just a plumbus like suggestive of something but it's ultimately just pattern soup so the the appearance of this flower like protrusion here may just be part of pattern soup and comment uh the word redundant five times if you if you're sick of hearing me say the same theories over and over but i think the more examples we see of this, the more clear it becomes that that's what's going on, to me at least. Okay, and then lastly in this image, 
Let's check out these uh, straight lines or these fairly clean grooves, which may be natural layering or creases or seams in the rock. Um, gosh, but given the this here and this up here and the head up on the other side of the rock and the wings or whatever, I'm going to even say that this stuff right here is just like uh, done by the same hand as whatever did this foot. So it's like this foot is made to look 66% natural and then this is uh, this area over here is made to look 96% natural or something like that. Um, but there's still a slight component of like just slightly irksome uh, straight lines here, uh, possibly using the same rationale or uh, um, uh, algorithms as whatever etches parallel lines on the surface of the earth, like on a larger scale, like Google Maps style, um, or like we've been looking at from Google Maps. So these parallel lines are slightly curious, especially since the up above and below is kind of like smoother so these aren't necessarily legit layers maybe I mean <laughs> and we could even imagine how these what I'm calling toes might just be portions of this natural layering if this is natural but I already stated my opinion so let's move on just one more little zoom here good angle of this foot nice clearly defined edge here to it and this instep is like the nail in the coffin for me. Uh, like th this, this little curve right here is what uh, it sends me over the top and saying, yeah, that really looks like a foot. Um, and the toes are pretty toesy as well. And could look at the straightish creases. Okay. Um, oops. And one more look at uh, the foot there, I guess. He's just pointing it out. So kudos to this guy for finding this site. Where is it again? I don't know, somewhere in Colorado. Middle of nowhere, basically. Um, okay, so that's just one last look at the foot. One, two, and all right, we continue. So this is up on top. So this would be like the left wing of the the gargoyle dude i think like over here might be his right wing or something like that or the back of his head it's not quite clear but um this is up on top and we're going to take a look at some of these rocks and some of the features we observe so i think nothing to point out in this image other than the fact that like there's some possibly interesting grooves and stuff and, like little ticks and stuff and like one could imagine how we could from a certain angle and certain lighting we could interpret this as a face or any number of things as a face and that's either by design or just by coincidence um you know just natural rock looking weird um so like this could look like an alligator head or any number of things but um not necessarily so uh just keep that in mind uh and then just scrolling over to this area we're going to take a look at this area and on our way over, this is looking a little weird. I don't know. Again, I'm supposing that the whole uh, landscape is uh, crafted on a massive scale or sculpted with these little Id idiosyncrasies just being um, like icing on the cake. But the real story is the terraforming of the, the whole uh, landscape and the, the whole history or context of earth and humans okay uh but for the most part looking mostly natural you know the rock and okay so this area we're gonna focus on for a moment and so we've got some grooves like that which are potentially interesting potentially natural uh just bedding or uh seams of bedrock uh, layering okay and uh, I'm gonna point out uh, this possibly angular feature here or at least linear for a bit so some mild mildly suggestive features here uh, like 
just slightly artificial nonsense. So uh, we'll just look at a few different images. In this one, we get a fairly decent look at this random right angle here. So either we're dealing with some type of uh, concrete or like big mass of uh, rock and or whatever else is mixed up in the rock. And then this is like some pattern which is uh, mixed up in the rock um, or some uh, structure or remains of some piece of something. And then it's all molded together. Kind of has some mm, slightly suggestive of a line going across here, maybe. It might just be the, the coloring or the angle or a natural seam. Um, let's see. There's the idea of uh, petrified imprints, like Wise Up on the Wise Up YouTube channel. He talks about petrified imprints. So the idea there would be like something was some type of artificial object or structure was leaning up against this uh, area of mud or rock or whatever it was, and it left an imprint of some type of angular thing. But then, uh, so either this is natural, in my opinion, this uh, thing, and it just happens to look like a right angle, or it's, again, more pattern soup, just gibberish. Uh, and then right here, these curves just uh, subjectively look a little weird to me. So I think that's all I have to say about this little area. So one more look at this right angle thing, and then these these little, it looks like fingers, or not like actual biological fingers, but just little stripes of curved uh, weird rock. Just looking a little odd to me. Okay, so let's keep going. And yeah, well, let's look at these. All right, so uh, pretty long-winded so far, but let me do one more uh, recap of the likely explanations as pertains to, uh, uh, bear with me for a second. Uh, oh, God. sorry, I'm scrolling amateur. So as it pertains to this guy and the, the whole story with the, including the foot and the possible flower thing up above the foot uh, and the surrounding rock, and a possible face and wings or whatever. So what are, this whole scene right here, what is what are some of the most likely explanations for all this? So let's start off with a uh, slight chance it's just natural rock, which happens to resemble a creature, but it's not. And so, okay, if it were just the face, um, I would say this is much more likely, but since there's that footprint on the back, um, and the footprint is pretty uncannily resembling a foot, I think this is the least likely explanation. Uh, the, the foot sends me over the top, so I have a rough time with the natural explanation for this place. My first instinct was that this was not an actual face and it was just natural rock and that the guy was just a kook, you know what I mean? But I don't think so. I think it's, you know, not a kook, but just like, um, uh, I, I don't mean to make it about him, but, um, like just incorrect, like w we are just incorrectly perceiving that there's a face there in it and it just looked like natural rock. That was my first inclination when viewing the, the face. Um, but then when I saw the foot, uh, that sent me over the top. So, okay, next, most likely, uh, it was an actual biological creature and then the petrification of it happened naturally. So um, I don't think that's very likely just because how would that uh, protruding foot, uh, slightly protruding foot happen? It's just, um, I don't know. It doesn't seem likely to me. All right. Um, uh, next up, it was an actual biological creature which was petrified but the petrification happened using some t sort of strange weaponry or device. So the, the whole rocky area is like corpse concrete, or at least there's some corpses, actual corpses from actual creatures mixed up in there. And I do think that's 
uh, a fairly decent explanation that wouldn't surprise me. Um, you know, even just for like amusement purposes or like some type of <laughs> sick joke or something like that. Uh, someone just wanted to take all all the animals they killed in a war or something or all the people and um, just whip it up into some uh, uh, morbid collage or a goofy collage like as a trophy even or for any number of motivations uh, so this explanation it's still a biological some creature which actually lived okay so other we have uh, it could be a natural feature which some hikers or artists came along and uh, embellished so the foot maybe the foot like slightly looked like toes and it kind of looked like a foot and then somebody came along and uh, you know just with some spare time and a chisel or whatever they said oh you know what this looks a little bit like a foot I'm gonna really make it look like a foot and you know just like 15 years ago or something somebody uh, just whittled away at, at the rock and uh, created a, a foot you know just for innocent self-expression so that's quite likely I would say um, or somewhat likely uh, in context of all the other weird historical sites around the world I, I say that's not as likely as these other ones um, okay, accidental AI vomit, I kind of already covered, so just weird patterns, but no, um, no dubious intentions behind it. And then artistic doodling by someone with high tech. So it could be, uh, like, you know, the, the Elohim or the Anunnaki or out on a picnic in the middle of <laughs> Colorado or whatever, and they just decide to amuse themselves to whip out their super laser pens and draw some doodles in the rock uh, so I mean that could always something like that could always be at play and then any number of other explanations including like a shock test like some like if we are in some alien ant farm or something like that maybe something just manipulates parameters and uh, does the the whole gibberish protocol as a way of just seeing how we respond to it just to uh, to draw conclusions and correlations so like they may not even have any particular agenda behind their gibberish protocol other than to see how we respond to that gibberish and learn about our learn about us from our responses like uh, just learning basically so that's a much more innocent intention than some of these other ones so next up we have uh, some type of cover-up. I might, might even swap these two sectors, like maybe other is more likely than this one. So I might I might downgrade this one actually even. But uh, so okay, so the weird cover-up, so the the creature face and the footprint or the uh, protruding foot are uh, false details in order to cover up like, you know, a former building which was there or some type of uh, uh, I don't know, archaeological feature or uh, natural feature or who knows. Or maybe even as like like markers on some, some strange pattern, uh, treasure map. Like you could imagine like some, uh, like what if Earth is like a weird uh, tourist destination and you know to like interdimensional travel travelers or whatever and some game they play, like they have this weird treasure map where they can, uh, you know, the treasure map says, go left at the, the gargoyle staring east-west or something like that. <laughs> I mean, northeast or something. And then, um, you, as like as a scavenger hunt or a treasure map or something like that, these weird features are injected into the uh, landscape to, um, to uh, act as little markers in this or props in in this game um i mean that's just one out there possibility but yeah maybe maybe the gargoyle dude and the footprint are there to um scramble or obscure whatever was there beforehand 
and what was there beforehand? I have no idea. So again, could be anything. Okay, and lastly, um, the entire scene, including the landscape and the like, the Rocky Mountains and stuff, possibly, was whipped up from scratch as a mystery which does not resolve. Um, lots of idiosyncrasies, you know, the flower, the footprint, the gargoyle dude. Uh, it's hints at a story which doesn't add up. Like, it's almost a story, but it's not quite. It's basically just confusing details which uh, don't add up to anything particular. So that's a possibility. Again, if it were just this guy, I'd say meh, maybe natural. But if it was, but with the footprint, I'm gonna go with the whole scene is deliberate gibberish. That's my best guess. And to wrap things up here, I'm gonna go through a few more miscellaneous images, including some more footprints. So I don't know, this looks like Ireland or England somewhere maybe. I'm not quite sure where this is, but we have this indication of a footprint here. Here looking like just a lone one, or although there may be another one here. But uh, the idea, again, of a calling card, like just gibberish left as a calling card, um, among other things, so like a multi-purpose uh, purpose. But um, I think these contours in the rock are to be questions questioned as well, like the whole uh, outcrop of rock and the uh, layout of the land. Um, yeah, it may not may not be legitimate, but just again, f weird, slightly cartoonish looking footprints everywhere, and uh, the f cartoonishness is not to be ignored in my opinion. Sometimes they look real, like I could imagine this being real, but. Could also be staged, you know, just staged dinosaur footprints. Maybe real, maybe staged. I uh, don't have a great look at it here, so hard to make out what's really going on, but possibly just props to paint a false narrative or a fa uh, false sense of context for people. Okay, in Wyoming, we have these uh, handprint indentations, and so this is suggestive of like something which softened the rock. And then people were just like um, taking swipes at it with their hands, similar to how we might, you know, uh, run our fingers through like sour cream or something like that. Um, but again, I would just go with the same explanation of uh, variation upon variation of f uh, feature, which um, hints at. Uh, conflicting story details as a scramble on our sense of context. So this one could be two hands next to each other, um, or it could be a multi-fingered person. But I don't think this is like a legitimate event in which someone ran their fingers through soft stone. I th think it's much more likely that um, <clears throat> it's staged to look that way, to appear as though that's the case. So I think that explains it well enough. Okay. So this, again, just some miscellaneous images. This kind of reminiscent of the gargoyle dude in Colorado that we spent so long on. Um, the, like a, a left arm, like an elbow and wrist and hand or a claw or something the head up here. So either an actual petrified creature which has been tweaked out with some kind of high-tech rock manipulation technology um, or, uh, or just gibberish which is quasi-biological. Uh, this one I think is one more from Fontainebleau and looking quite a bit like a freaking dinosaur skull or something like the um, like some type of process or protuberance or whatever you call it or horn on the, the skull here, like uh, some uh, ridges along the, the forehead area, and then this would be like the nose area, and then the, the cheekbone area, kind of looking like one of those duck-billed dinosaurs. Possibly some photoshopping going on, but I don't, I don't know if it's striking me as real. Definite uh, eye cavity here, although looking pretty tiny in comparison to the rest of it. 
So gibberish, petrified real creature, who knows. Again, this one just strikes me as gibberish. It's like, it could be natural, but it, it's also like fairly blatant. And some people would say it's petrified biology, but ooh, looking too goofy, like a fake butt, cartoonish butt. Some people would perceive this as like a petrified hand. I would say 70% chance this is natural to the degree that things are natural. Um, or, I mean, erosion does happen. We observe it happen. So 70 or 60% chance this is erosion. And, uh, and the rest percent, I would say this is just um, like calculated gibberish, which is meant to look... 15% like a some type of giant King Kong hand or petrified hand or something like that Okay, enough said this guy obviously looking somewhat anthropomorphic like a head and shoulders and uh, torso and definitely uh, like a uh, Lower portion like ending abruptly like a skirt and like two legs here like so this is the type of thing where the the layering of the rock would be um, designed to align with some type of anthropomorphic feature. So it's like this these uh, intersecting um, like uh, feature types along a unified path. If that makes sense, like. Uh, rock layering or bottom of a petrified skirt or something like that uh, or just gibberish you know sorry I'm getting tired <laughs> this is a long video um, it'll all be over within hopefully 20 minutes so okay uh, just take a break if you need one or whatever um, uh, so there's a couple areas which look like elephants this one, unfortunately, this image is pretty low resolution. Uh, but this island, which looks like it might be an elephant, these are reminiscent of elephant shapes. Burp -a -der, der, 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 der. Uh, so, okay, pretty cool. This one especially, obviously, the uh, striations of rock. Uh, flowy rockness. Okay, great, awesome. Um, so... The texture of the rock, I will say, is reminiscent of columnar basalt. It may even be columnar basalt, like the hexagonal rock um, formations. So, one last time, I will reiterate the possibility that rather than the columnar basalt hexagonal pattern being uh, cellular or tendons or um, some type of biological um, uh, tissue, including plant fiber um, rather than this rock texture being petrified um, biological material I would say there's a chance that it's uh, just deceptively made to look that way okay and that would be along the lines of um, you know this uh, last ditch attempt to paint um, giants as some uh, defining factor in our history when in fact that may be yet another layer of deception so there's so many layers to this crap um, I mean it's almost not worth studying I, I do think there's some wisdom in just you know abandoning it abandoning it altogether or at least focusing on things that are important for you in like your own particular life so um, yeah okay but just in this image obviously this hole here or uh, indentation or cavity or cave or whatever over here as well like lining up perfectly with where an elephant's eyebrow might be the uh, the ear maybe even like hints at a jawline and a trunk obviously the beginning of one and interesting contours here looking quite let me get a slight different angle on it here definitely looking like an, a freaking elephant I'm obviously um, and okay, I will say the pairing of this image with this image up above it, this may not be, uh, the same site. Like I've tried to get a good look at this island from different angles, 
like with Google Earth and stuff, but I'm not entirely positive that this uh, this elephant is the same as this elephant, you know, just uh, for humoring the idea that these are petrified elephants, just calling them elephants. But this one certainly looks like an elephant laying down. Uh, can we agree on that? And this one, uh, if it's not the same site, certainly has the head and, and trunk and possible ear thing going. Um, and all the previous likely explanations apply, including made to look like an elephant when it's not, or it may just be an actual petrified elephant, or it may be like a petrified um, uh, gerbil, which was tweaked out to re uh, resemble an elephant. So any number of possibilities here. Really good angle here, the eye cavity. Uh, but things are not always what they appear to be, so could certainly imagine this being natural. Um, I would say I'm almost like 50-50 on like between um, whether I think this is purely natural or like an actual petrified giant, or it could be an actual petrified organism, but it was just a regular sized elephant, which someone uh, blew up to enormous size with high technology. Okay, so, um, so between petrified elephant and uh, just a natural feature, which looks like a natural, or I mean, which looks like an elephant, I would say I'm 50-50, but um, then the possibility I'm leaning towards most is that it's just not an actual elephant. It's, uh, um, <clears throat> it's made to look like an elephant deliberately, deceptively. And then one more comment on that line of thinking. It's very possible that some areas of Earth do have massive petrified biology. And then on top of that, some type of um, scrambling or uh, um, dilution or uh, diluting the truth operation happens. Uh, and then a bunch of fakes are created, like sculpted into the rock. So maybe there was a whole bunch of actual giants petrified, you know, during a war or some type of battle or even a cataclysm or something like that. And then after that, um, somebody came along and said, hey, let's make um, 50 more giant biological sites. Um, which look like the, the previous ones, the real ones, but these new ones will be faked, obviously. So, a little tedious going through all these possibilities, but we gotta, we gotta, we gotta kind of rack our noodles here and also be humble. So that's why I try to include that other category, because I'm sure there's a lot of stuff you've thought of that I haven't thought of. Um, uh, so, yeah. And there's always the self-expression possibility, like this looked a little bit like an elephant and then some advanced artist came along uh, in their flying saucer or whatever and said, you know what, I'm going to make that look a lot like an elephant, just for fun. So, phew! Alright, and it's off the coast of Iceland, so whatevers. Um, Alright, and then uh, some features of rock and landscape in general, just to con compare, like some, uh, some aspects of the landscape obviously look, this doesn't look like a natural arch, which is eroded naturally. This kind of looks like it's warped rock or like bent rock into an arch. So just uh, trying to uh, deduce um, the origin of the elephant from stuff like this. So if this is artificial warping of the land, then we might suspect that this might be as well. So just keep that in mind. And this isn't super definitive, this is very speculative, but um, we've seen plenty of weird stuff on the Earth's surface, so it's not too uh, outlandish to at least speculate. Here's some folds in land that I found, which happen to resemble uh, like the, the look or the, uh, the fibrous look of the rock, I would say is quite similar to the fibrous texture of the elephant trunk and the, the body. Um, 
So either this is a uh, biological two, or it's the natural rock, or it's um, like uh, raw material, which or like raw patterning, or just arbitrary patterning, which has uh, been used in the, the big gibberish overhaul or makeover of Earth's surface. So this could be natural. Um, else anything else just the ripples are very interesting could certainly certainly be uh, tectonic activity or volcanic uh, creating this but it could just be like uh, you know big impressive fake patterns this one looks more natural I would say but there's a chance it's not just I don't know for reference I'm not quite sure what I wanted to highlight or what points I wanted to make on these with the cross bedding here possible just fake rock or fake configuration of it then like dragon scales um, like the old grid or in like one variation of the old grid type phenomena is uh, the dragon scales type patterning but I kind of doubt that it's actual skin but this this again this may this type of patterning on the earth's surface is maybe part of some false attempt to portray Earth as a big corpse or collage of corpses. Um, you know, just one more false story to uh, deceive and mislead and uh, keep us from discerning the truth. So this, this may be like random patterns, but it may also be somewhat strategic as like a, a rollout of this uh, yet another fake explanation for Earth's history. Uh, AKA the large biology angle. Who the frick knows? Um, and stuff like this, a little smaller scale, but just like little rocky knobs. So just painting the picture that Earth's surface is uh, very weird, and weird things have been done with the rock. Uh, French Alps, apparently. Um, or at least that's the caption uh, on the blog I, was, I got this image from. But uh, I could easily see this being natural. I could easily see this being artificial. Biological, maybe not. But uh, looking at least 5% artificial. I don't know. Okay. And then we have stuff like this, which could be perceived as a, a giant fist. How... Uh, or even a natural outcrop of rock. Uh, but then what else do we have? We have stuff like this, which I would say informs slightly our explanation of this. Um, you know, this kind of thing. We obviously have this artificial thing here. Some people would try and pass this off as a petrified actual piece of biology, but or like a giant or something. But I think this is too derpy looking to be real, um, like a real organism. And then we have these contours here, which are quite nonsensical. I don't think these are actual leg legitimate contours. I think they're just um, goofy patterns in the stone that are imposed uh, for bewilderment purposes. Uh, so it's just a big uh, goof show. So then when, when you see that obvious thing, this slight, so this obvious goof show, then this slightly less obvious goof, goof show uh, becomes clearer, or its explanation, and then even stuff like this, maybe it uh, informs our interpretation of this. Uh, okay. Like, there's, there's varying degrees of um, goof show. So some cases it's 99% natural looking, some cases it's just absurd like, like this. Okay, so in conclusion, I do think there very well may be some petrified large bi biology uh, on the Earth's surface of um, varying sizes, anywhere from, you know, human size to miles long and uh, hundreds of miles long, possibly, and then it's possibly a deception as well. So, uh... I'm saying this guy in Colorado and this whole scene, 
is the same agenda as this right here. It's just a variation on an attempt to confuse as part of a context hijack or context scramble or a, f a f uh, rattling the ant cage with false reference points so that we, we just kind of r run around in random directions spiritually and uh, cognitively and belief system wise. I am done. You were probably done half an hour ago, but if you're still here, thank you for watching. Um, and I have one more sh uh, short-ish commentary. I'll, I'll talk about hair, at large, potentially petrified hair in the next video. So check that one out. All right, see you later.